can an outfit be the difference between going home with the gold or being left out in the cold? Today, we are going to design the ultimate Olympic athletic uniform that can make anyone reach that number one spot. Hello Internet, welcome to Style Theory, the show that's ready to take home the gold. One of my favorite things to cover here on the channel is how fashion can be more than just aesthetics. It can be a tool, one that could even lead you to standing on that winner's podium alongside Simone Biles, who by the way is wearing a leotard worth $3,000 for one leotard. If you're not an avid watcher of the Summer Olympics, you may not realize just how big the games really are and how many of those expensive uniforms they have to make. There are 329 events in this year's games alone, and more than 10,000 athletes, all of whom get a uniform unique to their sport. I don't know about you, but that seems complicated, not to mention pricey. Bulk ordering, or the process of ordering items in mass quantities, is a way many businesses save money. Buy more, spend less. And clearly, the Olympics is looking to save some cash, you know, since they have the world's greatest athletes sleeping on cardboard beds. That's why they did it, right? Budget. No other reasons. So what if we can simplify that process and create one outfit for every Olympic champion? Because that is exactly what we are going to do today. By the end of this episode, we will have put together the perfect gold medal fit for all of those fit AF athletes, specifically for our land-based competitors. But don't worry, swimmers, because we will get to you in 2028 when you're on my turf. Now, to build our uniform fairly, we need to take a look across all the sports to see what items will be in the running for our final uniform. Right away, we can cut a few options from our lineup. Any sport like golf or horseback riding, where they don't generally use athletic wear, are not going to make the cut. That's not to say that they don't have great style or function, but for the purposes of making a uniform that can span the most sports possible, any event that falls into that category is going to be cut. After carefully analyzing each option across both male and female athletes, I was able to make a list of the most common clothing items used in the games. They'll all be competing in three qualifying rounds to see if they have what it takes to make it onto Style Theory's Olympic team or if they'll be cut from the competition. Are you ready? On your mark, get set! Go! When it comes to taking home the gold, you need to be able to cut through the air like a bird or a plane. From the track field to the tennis courts, it's all about getting where you need to be fast. Which brings us to our first qualifying round, aerodynamics. For everyone not up to date on their AP physics terms, aerodynamics is how much drag or resistance an object has when moving through the air. And if you're not careful, your clothes can literally drag you down. While the human body itself is surprisingly aerodynamic because it is able to use its arms and legs to help it cut through the air, it turns out that what we wear can actually make a bigger difference. A study for the National Institute of Medicine found that when runners wore clothes that lowered their drag by just 2%, the runner could shave 5.7 seconds off their race time. Now that may not seem like much until you remember that the difference between the gold and silver medal for the women's marathon at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics was a mere 16 seconds. Items that are so smooth and take up less surface area will create less drag to the person wearing them. When your clothing item has excess fabric, it creates a pocket that can catch and hold air, much like a parachute or a sail, which actually makes our first round of eliminations surprisingly easy. Taking a look at our common items, we have several that fall into this problem. Starting with our tops, we can easily eliminate any of our loose-fitting options, such as our non-form-fitting tank tops and t-shirts. While they wouldn't make a huge difference to your everyday person playing a game of soccer or football, to a professional athlete, that little change can create big results. And it means that when we get to our bottoms, our loose-fitting shorts and pants are also a bust. I am sorry, chat. I know you love your basketball shorts, but they gots to go. In that same vein, so does our athletic skirt or skort. This kind of item is generally found in sports like tennis, where if you didn't know, the Olympics used to require women to wear not skirts, but actual full ankle-length corseted dresses to compete. Just just imagine running around in a hundred and plus degree summer heat in that getup. You'd be keeling over from heat stroke before you even reach the finish line. Eventually, this rule was lifted, but the love of the tennis skirt remained. I get it. I love myself a pop flex skirt as much as the next person, but for the Style Theory Olympic team, we will have to sacrifice the cute twirling action to keep our 
yourself in the game. The other thing to consider here, human skin. It turns out that skin is not the best choice when it comes down to aerodynamics. Why? We're bumpy. The texture of our skin, its pores, hairs, and wrinkles can all lead to what's called skin friction drag. It's what it sounds like, the friction of the air hitting our skin and slowing us down. This is why you see many cyclists covering up their whole body during a race. The less skin showing, the faster they end up moving. However, while covering our body head to toe in spandex may seem like the right option when you put it like that, it may not be an available option if we're looking to make an outfit for all of our athletes. Sports like volleyball and wrestling have rules about how long their bottoms can be, so our options here are going to have to be cut a bit short. Not only that, but for sports like wrestling and gymnastics, they're required to wear one-piece outfits called singlets, or leotards, depending on the sport. As it stands at the end of round one, we are going to need a form-fitting singlet or leotard with shorts that hit above the knee and some type of sleeve to minimize our skin drag. For our goal of trying to give these athletes a budget for some real beds, we're going to go halvesies and settle for elbow-length sleeves. Based on the amount of cloth used for the average jumpsuit, we can estimate that it will take roughly three to four yards yards of fabric per singlet. For fairness, we'll round that up to four yards and keep that in mind as we go into round two. When it comes to almost any sport, being able to move freely is a big factor. You need an option that gives you the widest range of movement, whether you're spiking a volleyball or swinging on the uneven bars. This all comes down to flexibility. For an athlete, being flexible isn't just the difference of winning or losing, it can save them from injury. Without proper training, your muscles and joints are put under a strain that can lead to per permanent damage, and the same goes for their clothes. A stiff garment will prevent you from using your full range of motion. Imagine you're wearing a shirt that's a size too small and made of a super stiff fabric like denim. If you go to lift your arms, you'll see that the fabric only has so much give before you're unable to keep moving. So not only does our final garment need to fit like a second skin and be made of a flexible fabric, it needs to leave the key joints unobstructed. We're not looking to have any weird seams here, chat. So let's turn to the sport that requires the most flexibility, gymnastics. Like we mentioned, you see two main types of uniforms here, leotards and singlets. Now, these can vary wildly in design from year to year, person to person, and team to team. And I'm not talking about the sparkle. Though let me tell you, those crystals on this year's outfits, those girls are shining like the top of the Chrysler building, honey. But back to our design. Long sleeve, short sleeve, pants, bikini bottoms, they've all appeared on the Olympic stage. And that's fascinating to me because it tells me that in terms of flexibility, unlike our aerodynamics, the shape of the clothes isn't as important as the fabric choice. These garments are made of high stretch materials, usually a nylon, spandex, or polyester, but which would be best for our final outfit? Well, thanks to JK Elite, the company behind this year's Team USA Leos, we already have our answer, and it is a secret, better fourth option. It's a fabric called Mystique. This custom developed fabric is a blend of nylon and spandex that allows for extreme flexibility with its four way stretch while also remaining extremely durable thanks to the nylon. We actually talk about how strong nylon is in our fallout video. That means no chance of accidentally ripping your Leo when you do a split and the garment will be as close to a second skin as you can get. It also still fits into our budget mindset. At about 10 to 15 a yard, we'll still come in well below that initial leotard cost. And again, we'll round up like we did in round one, keeping it at $15 a yard. This puts our current cost at about $60 per singlet. Not bad. See, Simone, I haven't forgotten you or your cardboard beds. I got you, girl. Bonus, it also uses a specialty tech to incorporate holograms and foils into the design, meaning our look will be both sturdy and glamorous. So clearly, our outfit needs to be made of mystique, right? Well, there is one other factor to consider here. Gymnastics is an indoor sport, meaning they're not usually dealing with the hot summer sun like most of our other athletes at the games. So we need to figure out if our current fabric option is going to have our athletes running to the winner's circle or dying of heat stroke. When you're competing on the world stage against the best of the best in your field, the last thing you want to do is worry about how uncomfortable your outfit is. Not only do our uniforms need to help our competitors be quick and flexible, they need to be able to keep them cool and dry for upwards of two hours of physical exertion at a time. 
back, some events even go as long as five hours. I am honestly exhausted just thinking about it. Can we take a nap break, please? No? Fine. Well, then to give me an energy boost, I'd love it if you would click that subscribe button. To creators like me, that's the equivalent of drinking five cans of Celsius. So get ready, because we're going to hit that subscribe button in three, two, one. Woo! We are back, baby! Let's go! Now, if our athletes are gonna go hard for hours on end, their clothes need to be breathable. We can go about this in two different ways. One, wearing items that leave our sweatiest areas open to the air. This would be something like our bikini top or bottom, as well as our form-fitting tank tops. These let our sweatiest areas, like our armpits and inner thighs, be exposed to open air, helping to keep us cool. However, as we learned in round one, all that skin can also be a big problem. And not just for our aerodynamics. It can also lead to a lot of pain. You see, when your hot, sweaty skin rubs against itself, it causes friction. Friction that can lead to an extremely painful skin irritation known as chafing. And I don't know about you, but that kind of pain seems like a big strike against our bikini items and our basic leotard, which generally has a bathing suit-like bottom. It also means that our tank top is towing a fine line here. A tank top can either be a breathable dream or a chafing nightmare. And that is not a chance we can take with the Olympic gold on the line. Sorry, tank top, you've been benched. The other way to keep our athletes cool is with option number two, fabric choice. Funny how it all comes back to that. It's almost like fashion is as much of a tool as it is an aesthetic choice. This is best achieved by using a moisture wicking material, which are designed to pull moisture away from the skin and absorb it into the fabric. From there, the fabric then pushes pushes that water vapor up towards the fabric surface where it can then evaporate. This keeps our athlete dry, even after, say, a five our tennis match. Sorry, sorry, I am still not over that. But is our current front runner, the Mystique fabric, able to pass that moisture wicking test? Turns out, yes. Nylon and spandex are both hydrophobic synthetic fabrics, meaning that they repel water. However, to make our uniform the best it can be, we actually need two layers of fabric. Our Mystique will be the layer closest to our skin, while the outer layer will need to be made out of a water absorbing or hydrophilic fabric. This is the key to getting that moisture wicking action, as the hydrophilic fabric will pull the sweat from our inner layer up to the surface where it can then evaporate. The best option for us here? Cotton. Not only will it act like a sponge for our sweat, it is usually made with an open weave method, which is a type of weave that leaves more room for air to flow through it and helping to take that wicking effect to the next level. And just to keep our flexibility high, we'll use a cotton and synthetic blend to keep that stretch. While cotton blends do tend to be a bit pricier than regular cotton, it still only averages out to about three to four dollars a yard in bulk, which is not a bad price at all. Add that to our estimations from last round and we're sitting at about $76 per singlet. Time to put it all together. Now that we've gone through all of our events, it's time to see what outfit will be taking the winner's spot on the podium and going home with the gold. When it comes to aerodynamics, we need a form-fitting singlet with bottoms that hit just above the knee to comply with current regulations and elbow length sleeves to minimize drag but not add too much excess fabric to sports where that can pose a problem. This singlet will be made up of two layers of fabric. The underlayer will be made of the same mystique fabric used to make this year's Team USA leotards, providing us with extreme stretch and durability. The outer layer will be made up of a synthetic cotton blend to help make our fit the perfect, affordable moisture wicking garment and keep the stretch. It comes in at a mere $76, which compared to the $3,000 of the original leotard, we looked at at the start of the episode is a marketable improvement. Now, a lot of the cost of that original leotard is the sparkle. Those are real Swarovski crystals. So let's add a little sparkle to our own garment, just to stay true to the spirit of the games. We can make it a style theory blue and add some team theorist embellishments. I'll give us a generous glitz bonus of $200. We're getting those good rhinestones from Michaels, honey, which will bring our final total to $270. 
$1,276, a mere 9.2% of the cost of this year's gold medal winning fit. So we have the perfect outfit now, right? Well, there is one small hiccup to this plan, the Olympics themselves. We mentioned briefly that each sport has standards for its uniform that must be met in order for athletes to compete. Breaking these rules can lead to the whole team being fined, or in some cases, disqualified. Not only that, but these rules are constantly changing. Looking back on all the outfits that have competed in the games over the years, many of them would no longer qualify for one reason or another. Sometimes these changes are due to the tech behind our sportswear evolving, letting us create newer and better fabrics to keep up with our greatest athletes, while other times it's because of changing social standards, good or bad. So while I would love to say, we solved the Olympics, I don't think we can. Instead, I think we've proven that there is so much more that goes into these competitions than people really know, and that the clothes they wear matter. This is the perfect outfit for Team USA and beyond. And who knows, maybe in four years when the Olympics come here to LA, they'll be wearing our Style Theory approved design and sleeping in an actual bed. But hey, that's just a theory, a style theory. Keep looking sharp. If you want to see us create the perfect nuclear survival outfit, click the video on screen now. And I'll see you next Saturday morning.